The Senate hearings on the suspect law enforcement lack of response to the January 6th fascist attack on the U.S. Capitol hasn't revealed any groundbreaking information, in my opinion, because like I've repeatedly said, it's not that there was a breakdown in law enforcement in their response. Law enforcement just wasn't going to respond to marauding white people the same way it responded to protesting black people. And I'm intentional with my words here because marauders intentionally search for people to attack and things to steal and to destroy. That's the definition of the word. The attack on the Capitol was planned to be violent. The emails that the FBI had proved it. And law enforcement at the highest levels decided that that wasn't anything worth responding to. Now, this, of course, is in stark contrast to the way law enforcement at every level in nearly every city responded to the protests this past summer, sparked by the public lynching of George Floyd. We've talked about the brutal repression of protesters as it was all unfolding and since then on this show. But the protests were raised in the Senate hearings on the Capitol insurrection in the most repugnant and obviously racist way possible to make the claim that the protests were just as violent as the fascist siege of the Capitol and that they were in some way a precursor to that January 6th attack. Now, of course, these disgusting comments came from people like Ted Cruz and Josh Hawley and their far right ilk. So that's not surprising at all. But what was and always has been annoying to me is the lack of a robust enough rebuttal in defense of black life and the protests for it from many Democrats, especially yesterday, since it was 30 years to the day that Rodney King was brutally beaten by LAPD cops on the side of the I-20 in California in the first videotaped racist cop assault that most of us had ever seen. Many of us had lived it. Most of us have known the violent and racist reputation of the police toward black and brown people in most cities and towns in this country. But I think that video footage of the beating of Rodney King was the first time the entire nation saw what we've always known and lived. Now, if you don't remember, on March 3rd, 1991, Rodney King was beaten by LAPD officers after a high speed chase during his arrest for drunk driving. George Holliday filmed the incident from his balcony nearby and sent that footage to local news station KTLA, which broadcast it and touched off a worldwide furor. The LAPD initially charged Rodney King with felony evading, but they later dropped the charge. King suffered multiple injuries from the beating, including a broken right leg. His face was badly cut and swollen. He had bruises on his body and a burn area to his chest where he had been jolted with a 50,000 volt stun gun. Most of those injuries were visible as he spoke to reporters from a wheelchair after his release from custody. Now, the four cops who beat King were charged with use of excessive force and were tried, but three were acquitted and the jury couldn't reach a verdict on the fourth, and that's when the uprising happened. Oh, people like to call it a riot, just like they do the protests this summer, but understand what people were responding to. Not just the outcome of that one trial, but the decades-long racial oppression by the LAPD and the economic oppression suffered by working class and poor Black people in the Los Angeles area. Decades of unaddressed police tyranny and poverty and denial of opportunity and mobility. But people didn't focus on that. They focused on the property damage, the violence, not the brutality of the system heaped on a community of people, black and brown, working class people all this time with yet another injustice made plain as day by the miracle of videotape, but that people still found a way to excuse away again. And people still focus more on the uprising after the verdict than on the injustices that led to it. So most people don't know that the federal government prosecuted a separate civil rights case that ended with the two uh, officers of the four being found guilty of violating Rodney King's civil rights and being sentenced to prison. The other two were acquitted of the charges. 
in a separate civil lawsuit in 1994, a jury found the city of Los Angeles liable and awarded Rodney King $3.8 million in damages. But people still talked about the uprising, calling them riots, and using that to dismiss the valid anger of the people toward an abusive, racist police department. And then the LAPD Rampart scandal broke in the late 1990s, where there was even more evidence of widespread corruption and violence and lawlessness in the department's elite gang unit, with even more cops going to prison for all manner of crimes. But all people still talk about is the L.A. riots and the violence of the people who suffered under that system of actual tyranny. So I felt like it was an obscene sin of omission that Senate Democrats let the disparaging accusations and deflections from the Republicans in that hearing slide. And this is the kind of moral abdication from the party that's supposed to be better than the GOP that makes me not trust them with anything, not with raising the minimum wage, certainly not actually ensuring anyone's right to vote. You know why? Because they're not really better than the GOP. They keep proving this. What they are are the silent enablers of the GOP and the system they all support. Follow Luke Mon Nation on Patreon.com slash Luke Mon Nation for lots of great content. Those are today's talk.